Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Recently, while filming the uh, Grid Down Emergency training video, I ran into a few issues uh, with my Raspberry Pi uh, to where I would boot up and I would get the desktop to my Pi, but I wouldn't get any of my icons or the start menu. So I'm not sure if that has something to do with the, the version of uh, Raspbian that I originally installed. I uh, originally started with Raspbian Lite and then went ahead and installed the desktop. And since that time, they've came out with a desktop-only version. Um, but I'm not sure if the problem was with that or was with the Rasp AP uh, software that I've been running. But I wanted to try something different and see if I had any better luck with it. Uh, so what I've done is I've, in, I've started with the Raspbian Stretch desktop-only version. I uh, got a clean install done, so I'm going to try to set up this new auto Wi-Fi hotspot switch uh, on this page. And I'll leave a link to this page down in the description below so that you guys can come over here and follow along as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and start by opening up the terminal. And let's go ahead and switch back to that web page and get started. All right, so scrolling down, this is just a little bit about the software, the aim of the software, and some additional features. Uh, under the requirements, it looks like this will work with the Pi Zero, uh, or the Pi Zero W, uh, the Pi 3, and the 3B+. Uh, if you've done anything with DMASK in the past, you won't pay attention to this section here. Since I'm running a clean install, I'm uh, going to skip past that section. This here is talking about uh, the naming of the network devices. So it would be a good idea to check it and make sure your name matches up. Uh, currently this uh, works, but the names could change in the future and might uh, trip you up a bit. But you can check that by running the iwdev command. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. And you'll see that our device name today is uh, interface WLAN 0. Uh, so we should be good to go there. All right, so let's continue on to step one here. All right, now the first thing you want to do is make sure you run the update and the upgrade command. I went ahead and took care of that uh, before I started filming today. Uh, so the next command we're going to need is this one here. So we'll go ahead and copy that. Head back over to our terminal and paste that in. All right, so that goes by pretty quick. Let's clear the screen and head back to see what our next command is going to be. All right, so we'll go ahead and copy the second command. And we're installing DMAS this time. The first time was uh, host APD. So let's go ahead and head back over to the terminal and paste in that next command. All right, let's go ahead and clear the screen again. Like All right, and it looks like we're going to be disabling both of those with these next two commands. So I'll go ahead and copy those one at a time, and we'll paste those in. And let's go ahead and grab that second command here and paste in it as well. All right, so it looks like next we're going to be creating... Uh, this configuration file here so we'll copy this command and head back over paste that in and we should see a new file indicator down here since that file doesn't exist let's go ahead and jump back over and copy the information that's supposed to reside in that file We'll go ahead and paste that into this new file that we've created. Okay, so while we're in here, let's take a look at a couple of things. Uh, the SSID right here, I believe that's what the Pi is going to broadcast when it creates its own hotspot. I believe this is going to be the hotspot name here. So if we wanted to change that later, we could. I'm going to leave it the way it is for now. Uh, and the passphrase right here will be the password that we use to connect to the hotspot on the Pi. Uh, again, I'm going to leave that alone for the time being. Now, one other thing I see here is the country code right here on this line. 
I'm just kind of taking a stab in the dark that GB may be for Great Britain. I'm going to change that to US and hope that that is correct. If it presents any problems, I guess we'll come back in and fix that later. All right, so let's go ahead and press Control X to get out of this. Y to save it and Enter to write it out to the disk. All right, so let's head back over and see what our next step is. All right, so next we're going to be editing this host APD file. So we'll go ahead and copy this command and paste that in. And I believe this here is going to be the first line we're looking for. Uh, Damon underscore comp. All right, and it looks like we're going to remove the pound sign in the beginning or from the beginning of that line. And then we're going to paste in this information here. And that's going to tell it where our host APD comp file is located. So I'll just copy that. All right, let's delete that pound symbol. And right there, and we'll say paste. That should get that in. Let's see if there's any more changes to be made. All right, and the last thing we need to check is just to make sure this uh, daemon options uh, is equal to quotation mark, quotation mark, and that it has the pound sign in front of it to comment it out. And right here, you can see it looks like that is the case. All right, let's press Control X, Y, and Enter. To write. So next, we're going to be editing the dnsmask.com file. So let's copy this and paste it in here. And I'm going to go back. It tells us to, uh, at the bottom of the file, to add the following lines. So we'll go ahead and copy this information. And I'm going to use Control V to quickly skip down to the bottom of this file. It's kind of like using the page down button. All right, once you reach the bottom, I'm going to just give it a space or two and then right click and paste that information that we copied in. All right, once again, we're going to use Control X, Y, and Enter to get out and write it back to the disk. All right, that's step one complete. Let's take a look at step two. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at our interfaces file and see what has been entered in there when the system was installed. So we'll copy this command, and we'll go ahead and paste it in, and let's take a look at that file. And it looks like we've got just the five standard files, or standard lines rather, here in our file. So we'll go ahead and just press Control X to get out of this. Now, if you had any more than this, you would want to go ahead and follow this uh, next set of instructions here. Uh, and all this would do is copy your interfaces file to an interfaces.backup, and then you could safely edit your interfaces file and remove everything except for these five lines. All right, so next we're going to look at editing the dhcpcd.com file. So we'll go ahead and copy that command and paste it in here. Again, we're going to use Control V until we get down to the bottom of the file, and we're going to need to copy and paste this line here to the very bottom of the file. We'll use Control X, Y, and Enter to get out and write that back to the disk. All right, so next we need to create a uh, service file so that this will run every time we boot up our Pi. So we'll go ahead and copy this to create this auto hotspot.service file. And that's going to again be a new file uh, so it'll be completely blank. We're going to grab this information here, copy it so we can paste it into the next file. All right, and once we've pasted that into the new file, uh, again, Control X, Y, and Enter to get out of it. And then using this next command here, this will en uh, enable it so that it will work on boot up. So let's go ahead and paste that one and clear that screen out. Give us a little bit more room to work with. All right, so now we need to check and make sure that we have IW installed. So we're going to copy this command and paste it in. Go ahead and hit return. And my status shows that it is installed okay. 
So we're good there. I can go ahead and clear that screen. Now, if yours was not installed, then you could use the next command here, the app get install IW, and that would go ahead and get it installed on your system as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and configure the auto hotspot script. Now, if you're using uh, hidden SSIDs on your network, you'll need to follow this uh, set of instructions here uh, for entering your MAC address inside this script. Since uh, I'm using SSIDs that are broadcast, I'm going to bypass this section here. All right, so next we need to get the auto hot script installed. Uh, now you could use the sudo command and copy and paste. I'm going to do things a little bit different here just because this is such a long uh, script. I don't want to miss anything here. So I'm just going to right click where it says this file can be downloaded from here and say copy the link address. I'm going to head back over to the Pi and use the wget command and paste in that link that we just got. All right, and you'll see that it downloaded autohotspot.txt. We can use the ls command to list out those files, and you'll see that right here. First thing I want to do is go ahead and rename that. So we'll use the move command, mv, auto, and I'm gonna, after hitting auto, I'm going to go ahead and hit the tab key. That's just going to autofill that information for me. And we just want to rename that to auto hotspot. We'll leave the .txt off of it. Go ahead and hit return. Run your ls command again, and you'll see that that has been renamed. Now we need to move that file to the proper location. So let's use sudo move auto, and I'm going to go ahead and use that tab command again to fill the rest of it out. Forward slash us, usr forward slash bin forward slash. And that's going to move this file to the user bin directory. All right, so if we run ls again, you'll see that that file is gone. And if we move over to user bin, we'll run the list command again. Oh, and you can see that's a pretty big file. Or, I'm sorry, a pretty big directory with a lot of things in it. So let's do this. Let's say ls. Use the pipe command. And we're going to grep for auto hotspot. Helps when you can spell things. And you'll see that that's listed here. So all this did, uh, listed the command, or I, I used the list command, the pipe symbol, and then I piped it through grep, which searched for auto hotspot and returned the contents here. So that tells me that the file is in this folder. And we need to go ahead and make that executable. So we'll run sudo chmod plus x auto hotspot and hit return. Now let's run the ls uh, command again and we'll go ahead and grep for auto hotspot. And one other change we need to make here. So I ran the ls-l command this time and piped it through grep. I wanted to see who owned this file. Uh, right now the user and group is pi. We want to go ahead and change that to, to root. So we're going to run sudo chown, C-H-O-W-N, or change owner, root, colon, root. Whoop. Well, did it twice. And then auto hotspot. All right, so now if we run the ls-l and grep it through, or grep for it, uh, auto hotspot, you'll see that now root owns that file. And now we're up to testing the hotspot. So according to this, first thing we need to do is go ahead and reboot our system. So I'm just going to issue sudo reboot, and we'll be back when the system comes back up. All right, so one thing that I missed uh, going through the tutorial, uh, and this is my first time through it, guys, so I'm kind of learning with you. Uh, we need to go in and edit this file. So that's sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash wpa underscore supplicant forward slash wpa underscore 
supplicant.conf. So we'll head back over to the web page and we'll go ahead and copy this information. This is under the testing the hotspot. I'm going to go ahead and copy that info. And it also gives you right here, you could copy and paste this as well. That's the uh, command that I just ran to get into editing that file. So we'll get that copied and we'll go ahead and paste it. And then you'll need to change your SSID to match that of your network. So in my case, I'm connected to KM4ACK dash to mesh. So I'll go ahead and enter that right here. All right, and that's probably case sensitive, so make sure you get it in there right. And I'm going to go ahead and enter my password and then control X, Y, and enter to save this file. Once that's complete, I'm going to go ahead and reboot the system again. All right, once the system reboots, you should see this icon right here. And if you click on that, it should show that we are already connected to my network. So that portion of it works. Now let's go test a little bit further. Now we're going to go back into that same file, uh, this one right here. So I'm going to copy that. And all we're going to do is we're going to change the SSID and add off to the end of it. So let's go ahead and make that change, and then we'll reboot and see what the pie looks like after a reboot. All right, so after the reboot, you notice that we don't have the wireless icon up here anymore. Uh, we click on this and it says no wireless interfaces found. And that is correct because this simulates what would happen if you leave your home network and it can't see the SSID that you've programmed into it. What we should see though, this is the wireless indicator on my Mac, not on the Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And if you look right here, we see the RPI hotspot being generated. So if we clicked on that and we entered the password that we saw earlier, I believe it was uh, one, two, three, all the way through nine and then zero at the end, uh, then we would go ahead and connect to the hotspot and we could then use a wireless uh, device such as an iPad or an iPhone or uh, you know your Android tablet or whatever. Uh, we could use it to VNC into the Raspberry Pi. So it looks like everything is working. I'm going to go ahead and change that back so it connects to my home network and get busy on building my new system. All right, guys, hope you learned something through this. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with me. It was the first time I had done this as well, uh, but kind of a cool new solution uh, that takes Rasp AP out of the picture. And I'm going to go ahead and get this system built up and see if it performs a little bit better than Rasp AP has after I ran into those issues doing the grid down video. All right, until next time, guys, 7-3.